Hey guys, so previously I made a video called Star Knight Invasions, which you can find up here or in the description, which is pretty much a complete primer on this corner enclosure shape, different ways of invading and approaching it and all that stuff. That video also shows you the difference between invading the 3-3 point here versus invading when Black has played the large knight's move enclosure. The point of today's video is to follow up on something related to the second line approach here at Q18. Black has various responses to this move, such as bumping here, blocking off the side like this and letting white into the corner, or even playing moves all the way over here or here to focus on influence. The most common response is this bump, because if white moves into the corner, then the life and death here is a little tricky for white, and it's generally going to be a good result for black anyway. If black blocks here, then white's going to have trouble making two eyes in the corner, and even if white does, black's usually going to end up pretty thick on the outside. For example, if white plays here, and black feels the need to respond here or fix the cut over here, white's going to need to play another move in the corner with one of these, and black will have sente and a really powerful outside, while white will only have a three-point corner in the end. Black can also consider this bump, since if white moves out, black can cut through into here. If white cuts, then white loses the liberty fight in the corner, so white would have to clamp like this and connect under. But white would be left without much in the way of eye space, so this would also be pretty dangerous for white. Another option for black could be to throw in here, let white live inside and just take the strong shape on the outside. White's usual response to black's bump is to move out onto the side. Black will then block the corner, and white has enough space now to survive by running out onto the side or running into the center thereafter. However, before white extends, white usually clamps in the corner here to see what black's going to do. If black simply connects, then white extends onto the side, and later on there's the potential of connecting at R19 to reduce black's corner. The main point of today's discussion is why black doesn't usually descend down to R19. At first, it seems like R19 is much better as it keeps all the corner territory and even if white cuts here, black can play a ladder like this. However, the real problem lies elsewhere. White always has this move later on to force black to connect in the corner. If black tries to block white off, then white can cut black in the corner and the black stones are captured. So you might be asking, okay, why doesn't black just fix the cut? White can push out in this direction, but white's extremely low and without eye space yet. The real problem is that white's not going to play this directly. White can wait until they have a stone around here. When this kind of situation comes up, if black defends in any way to get rid of the problem in the corner, such as this move here, then black ends up spending both of the marked stones here just to respond to the S18 clamp, which ends up really slow for black. And if black tries to play elsewhere, then white can play here. Black has to defend the cut with one of these moves. White can Atari and then connect under like this. This is a big loss to black and now black is also not completely alive. Black also can't cut white off here because white can always force once here and then cut with this move. I can tell you from experience that connecting at R17 is generally the way to go. I've tried many times to make R19 work to keep the whole corner since it's very painful to have to just connect here at R17 and potentially lose all those points. But 9 times out of 10 I always regretted playing R19 and the other one time it's probably just because my opponent neglected to take advantage of it. A couple of upsides here is that if you connect and white plays this move anytime soon during the early stages of the game, it's very much gota and you can ignore that. So this is a move to be played much later for white. That means there's a pretty decent chance that black may be able to play here first. The other nice thing in this situation is that when white plays away like this, white's still not alive at all, so you can attack by, for example, playing a move like this and chasing white around while white is not getting very much territory for themselves. Another reason why I'm showing you guys this today is because this technique is actually broadly applicable. Take this situation for example. If white clamps here at some point and black tries to break the connection, white cuts here and this is going to be a disaster for black. What if we put a black stone here? And suppose that we're dealing with a black territory here right now. This time if white clamps, black can actually cut down and even if white cuts, black may be able to ladder these two stones or just capture the one stone here and keep the territory connected. White can still run out with this weak group, but then black can make an attack. If black had any stones around here, then this white group would be in great danger right now. Sometimes instead of cutting though, you can do just the same as what we saw in the corner earlier, which is to jump here, threatening both to run away and also to cut here. If black fixes the cut, then white can proceed to just run away with any sort of moves like these. Here's a position from a Japanese pro game played in 2009. I'd like to show you what white played next in this position over here. Can you guess? 
It's actually a tough one, but white move is here. Now this is a little different from what we were looking at in the corner as this is not a clamp. However, the idea here is that if black tries to capture white like this, although white's cut doesn't work because black can just capture like this, white actually has this other attaching move, which is kind of like the jump we just saw in the upper right corner. This jump is simultaneously threatening to connect under or cut here at C13. If black blocks, white cuts here, and white's going to win the liberty fight with the three stones here. Therefore, black has to fix the cut with something like this, and white is able to pull back and connect to the corner. White can either connect like this, putting the two stones into Atari, or white can Atari here and then connect up like this. In the pro game, because it's too painful, black resisted like this. White cut here to capture two black stones, and black followed up on this side. So that's going to be it for today. I hope you guys got value out of that. More videos really soon, and as usual, stay safe and keep sente. Special thanks to my patrons for all the support, and an extra special thanks to Tyrus Bob, Legincar, Metropolis, Mr. Lalonde, Apertresque, Svaso, Hero75, and Yotis for going the extra mile. See you guys next time.